Uh, well, I just wanted everything to be able to fit inside the Ziploc bag, so I brought um, two stones with me, uh, also Arkansas stones. Um, as uh, John mentioned earlier, um, they're, they're rated by hardness and not by grit, so I've got a, uh, a fine and an ultra fine. Um, like almost used for surgical surgical tools sometimes. Um, I have uh, for final f finishing and smoothing. I use uh, 2,500 grit uh, um, sandpaper, uh, 12,000 grit um, micro mesh, and uh, and 0 0.02 uh, micron mylar film, uh, which is used for um, polishing the ends of uh, fiber optic. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Do not use any of the things that I use. Well, these are these are these are okay. You can you can use these things. I also I also have. I have a, um, a Belomo loop. It's uh, yeah, made in Belarus. It's one of like the best. Um, it is loops. the best. It, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Belomo. Yeah, it's it's like the best the best value like you know and also quality for the quality of clarity. Uh, but uh, twenty is kind of a lot. No, like you, you should. It's kind of too much. You should just go for ten. Yeah. Okay. I noticed that you had a lot of um, sandpaper in your Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it the same as what you brought out, or? Oh yeah, it's just it's just all just all this all the same stuff. I just rip it into so small little pieces. Do you recommend one sheet, or I mean, a strip of new sandpaper every time you yes. you work on a pen? Yeah, you don't yeah. use the same thing. Definitely, absolutely, because I it, use you want to make sure John that every. John uses the same thing, Ralph. You. I use I use it all the way to the edges. What he does is he like rips up a piece, he uses the center, and then throws it away. Well, I have a lot of it. <laughs> it's so wasteful. Okay. So I like. My, my question my next question is, is there a reason why both of you will use an Arkansas stone as against the Wet, Japanese, the Japanese wet, stones. wet stones that you would see in True value. Uh, for one thing, they don't have they they don't have the the uh, consistency not the consistency like they don't have the right feel like and on top of that they also wear down. The reason is um, yeah they, they they're soft they wear very quickly they have to be soaking at least several hours before using them and they always have to be wet when you use them so it's hard to you know work anywhere um, and they're wet stones so you have you, they always have to be soaked to prepare. Question for people aspiring to do their own nib grinds. Do you work on the nib ink or do you work on the nib, nib on ink that you're dipping? Does it matter? Because you know that the flow of the okay, pen see, would be different what dip I do, versus what I do is I, I I do dip when I work on them I just dip them because the, 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 it's not about test. Here you're using the ink more but as a lubricant. I know that the flow is different. Uh, that's John's face, but yeah. Like. I don't like to fill that often unless like it's a nice pen because I don't want to waste my ink. But also, when I dip, like you don't dip and then you see that. What you do is you dip, you wipe it, and then you like you like you dip it, you wipe it around the, the neck of the bottle, and then you tip it up and let the the ink soak down into the feet. Uh, I kind of eyedropper almost every time. Okay. So it's mostly like I eyedropper it and then I, I take it and I, I spin the pen kind of like this. The, well, and then ink sprays everywhere, but you know, I got gravity bringing it to the nib. first experimented with grinding nibs, how long did you spend working on them? An hour, 30 minutes, 5 minutes, uh, like how did you know not to go past the point of no return? Okay, so when you're working on nibs, like, you're gonna break nibs, that's like, it's a given, you will break nibs, but, um, when, you have to be able to know when to stop, and so you're working and then you feel, you write with it, and you're like, oh, it's raw, like, it needs more smoothness, you, you, then you, you grind off a bit more, you work again, it's like it's still, and when you realize that you're just in a cycle that, you know, you find there's something wrong with it, then you, you think there's something wrong and then you grind it, then when, when you realize that you just keep doing that, you need to, you, you, you put it away and then if you're working on other pens, just work on a different pen first. Sometimes you might actually have to just reshape the geometry of the nib work. <laughs> Does no. the type of ink matter when you're grinding? Of course. Oh, hundred percent. Okay, ten thousand percent. It does. Please explain oh why. Well, I mean, like uh, you want to you want to be able to use an ink that's like um, kind of like in between, uh, like dry and super yeah. wet. You, whatever. You have to use something that's not too dry, not too wet, because yeah. then if you tune it for a super dry ink. Then it's gonna be super wet. Yeah. If you use it if you tune it for super wet, it's gonna be super dry. Yeah. You, have, so you have to get something that's 
um, in the middle and also something you know is safe so if like you use the ink it doesn't stain the pen. What ink do you recommend? Well, uh, Waterman Florida Blue. Waterman Serenity, Serenity, Blue. Serenity Blue. Waterman Serenity Blue because it washes out of things um, faster than anything. Um, it has no stain. Yeah, clean, it, it actually, as they say, cleans pens. Yeah, exactly. Um, a good a good point to make is that you also, if you're grinding nibs, you also always want to use the same ink always. You know, yeah, you don't you, you don't want to like switch to something. Yeah, around. yeah. Yeah, you don't want to swap. You don't want to swap around because, because then, it, so you have a, some like you have one less variable. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's all for about. Me, a, I don't yeah. care. You don't so want to change the paper. The pen, and, yeah. If the pen comes in, I just use whatever ink is in there because yeah. it's a waste. You don't want to use the any. You don't want to use. Uh, you want to use the exact same paper, the exact same ink. Uh, reduce as many yeah. variables as possible. First, what, what because else? what happens is, you keep thinking that something is wrong. When in reality, maybe there was nothing wrong, and you were just playing mind games with yourself. Exactly. Yeah. What if if you don't stop? You're just gonna destroy the nib. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. How about for you? Yeah, for, I mean, the one thing to remember is that every time you fix something, you you mess up something else, you know. And then you have to go back and fix that thing, with hoping that you didn't mess up the thing that you just fixed. And the reality is that almost every time you end up messing up that thing. So it it ends up being like just the sick yeah the yeah. sick little like back and forth of just like you, you take know, off a little bit yeah. here you and then you have to take off more here mm -hmm. and then. You have to be able to find the balance of right, just right. taking off yeah. and off. Um, and I guess that's really where the experience comes in, being able to tell how far you should go. There are definitely limitations. Like it's not just about the tipping. Like there are definitely like the the like the, the rest of the nib literally makes a huge difference. The size of the nib, the material, the geometry, all of those things like determine like how kind of like what the what the limit of possibility is, so to speak. And also the yeah. behavior, like when you write, and also the pressure. That's also why uh, you have to know about the user. Bad idea to practice on dollar pens. No, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, actually, you should only you should only be practicing on those because don't practice on you know expensive pens because also, if you break them then that's that's so expensive. Like, like you have to do replace. not practice on other people's pens. Holy, like just do don't like that's just immoral. That's just wrong. Like to be practicing, don't experiment on things that you want to try on other people's prized possessions. So don't even don't ever accept work. Meaning like don't ever smooth out or grind anyone else's pens. Unless you're a hundred percent confident that you that you're able and, to do it, you, you have one hundred percent confidence. Because even if you have one hundred percent confidence, there's still like yeah, that. There's I, still that little room for yeah, you know yeah. that error. You know, even though you say you're a hundred percent confident, that doesn't mean a hundred percent guarantee it's gonna be right. That means like maybe like ninety five percent. You know, so, and when you're working with other people's prized possessions, things that might be handed down like from like a loved one, an heirloom. You, you don't you don't mess time. around you know you experiment on your own let's say if people like insist that you do it you always have to you know say that you have you have to tell them i'm i'm not that confident yep. you have to like are you yeah. okay with you that? have to recognize that you have like there are times where you have to respectfully decline yeah work. i, I and, do that and, way too and often and <laughs> choosing to accept the work rather than doing that is just immoral and wrong yeah. okay. especially yeah. like if you like if you're taking money to do it right then you have to do it right there's, it's one thing like you know people will hand you a pen just say play with it and you don't charge them or anything that's that's one thing mm -hmm. versus someone hands you a pen can you do like a needle point on this and you're and they'll, I'll pay you and you're like but if you don't if you if you're not sure you can do it then like don't do it or don't say you can do it right you have to so out of all the nibs that nib grinds that you guys have studied which ones were the ones that really inspired you or kind of you guys kind of went like an aha moment like wh whose nib grinds are the ones that you look up to the inspirational oh, ones? Nagahara Nobuyoshi Nagahara the legendary nib meister um, once at Sailor Pen Company uh, who no longer unfortunately is no longer on this earth but um, you know, part of what I'm doing is to protect Nagahara's legacy. He's the one who started off this whole idea. But, but it's hard for me to say because I kind of, I kind of made a king. I tried attempting to make my homage to a king, king eagle, uh, before I ever cut my first curse of italic. <laughs> it was like kind of the first nib thing I ever did. So I, I went really backwards. I kind of like went to the like the far extreme of like nib work, and then like I only recently I kind of learned how to point out the curse. Uh, yeah, I, like. Nagahara, I I wouldn't say he's an inspiration. It's more like I admire the stuff he did because I'm I'm never doing crazy shit like that. Um, 
Binder Motor Shop yeah. Masayama. Absolutely. Like the, cause yeah. I, I, do, I don't do, you know, the crazy things. There's yeah. crazy people who will yeah. do that. Yeah, because to be that. fair, you've had experience yeah. with Masayama, I've, I've handled, I've handled, handled everything. I've handled everything. I've handled everything. As a nib grinder, or to the aspiring nib grinders, the, the things that you should never, ever, ever do, like don't oh, even funny. consider it. Oh, that's me. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, don't... Don't, don't you know, experiment on other people's wow. pens. Don't accept work unless you're a thousand, like a hundred percent confident that you're able to do the work. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, also, don't steal other people's grind names. Jeez, like, don't, no, like just you, don't, don't, don't. You can, you can copy them. I guess I, I copy. Like, my CI is honestly a pattern after Masayama's, but I'm, and I, I'm openly admitting that. But, like, I'm not gonna claim like. I, I make round nose CIs or whatever. Right, right. right. There, there, like, there yeah. are certain there are certain nib designs, certain cuts yeah. uh, that really make a huge difference on um, you know even though you can have a have a stub that writes as sharp as a cursive italic, it is still a stub. It's, and it, and it is very very important to protect the integrity of what these words mean because you know people have been developing these these techniques these forms for so long you know so that that way like when you have a certain a certain angle like like a, a certain combination of angles like this this is something closer to a CI right or something like that but this this is like something like a stub and being able and even though they might write similarly they're very very different so you know it's just like a it's it's really important to you know um, you know maintain like what the idea of those things are also there these things are also creations of people you know like from inventions of their own mind uh, so they, they they really are intellectual property in a way. So, in many ways, like you cannot like call not a Naginata Togi unless your last name is Nagahara.